Hey guys, how's it going? So, I covered this topic in the past, but it's one of those things that I don't think that we can talk about enough. So, let's talk briefly about red flag laws again. Now, here's the deal. All the different red flag law, legislation, proposed legislation, it's still on the table. It's still in committees. We're still at just as big of a threat right now as having red flag laws, universal background checks, and many other things that are going to violate our Second Amendment rights and much of the rest of the Bill of Rights, right? Well, here's what's going on. We have a proposed impeachment or a fake impeachment or whatever you want to call it going on. And what that's doing is that's getting the 24-7 news cycles. And I think first and foremost, yes, they do want the president impeached. But what they also want to do is distract us so that they can come in and say, well, if we can't impeach him, let's just slide in some of this gun control in the meantime or possibly even use it to negotiate with President Trump. Imagine that, right? <laughs> Congressional leaders doing basically blackmail. They do it every day. So I just want to mention red flag laws again, guys. Um, I can talk more in detail in another video if you guys need me to, but I think most of us already know what they are, how draconian they are, how totalitarian they are, and how if they pass, they're basically going to make the United States like many other countries in the world where we don't have our due process, where there's things called ex parte hearings, where the person who's actually accused of this crime or whatever the heck a red flag law really is, because it doesn't fit crime and it doesn't fit innocence either, hence the problem with it, where there's hearings done behind your back, where they come in the middle of the night, knock on your door, kick it in, or worse, to take your guns and it's like Trump said take the guns first then due process later now of course all of the Democrats support red flag laws and many of the Republicans do too and as of now I believe President Donald Trump still supports them he's basically not only supported them but he's the one that kind of asked for them remember when he said like take them quick take the guns first then due process later so don't forget that, guys. This isn't just the Democrats. This is both sides of the aisle, and as of right now, probably even the president. So what we need to do is this. We need to stay focused, guys. We can't just sit there and just listen to all the impeachment stuff and think, well, that's fine. They don't care about taking our guns. Trust me. They care about taking our guns more now than they ever, ever have. They care about taking away all of our civil rights and civil liberties more than ever. And if you look at all these Democrat presidential candidates, they're telling us, like, I'm going to be more extreme on guns than the next person, right? So here's a couple quick ideas for you guys. First of all, you need to call, you need to write, you need to tweet. All of those things that we've said before, keep on doing it, guys. I know you've done it in the past. Maybe you've slowed up a little bit because it's not on the front page of the newspaper. Don't slow up. We've only got one chance to stop this stuff because if it goes through, like most laws that we're living under today, we're probably never going to get our rights back. It seems so easy for them to take our rights, but it seems virtually impossible, at least legislatively, to ever get them back. So, you know, as a member of Gun Owners of America, which if you're not already a member, I highly recommend it. They send these things from time to time. And this is what's nice about being part of a gun rights group. So they send a letter talking about the red flag laws. I won't read this letter. Most of you, again, already know what it is. If you need me to do another video on what red flag laws are, say so down in the description guys but feel free to go back in my channel and look at previous videos because i've talked about it quite a bit but they're just basically briefing us on how bad red flag laws are don't read this unless you're in a good mood because it'll ruin your day that's how bad they are but that's a good thing we should be kind of scared a little bit to get off of our butts and do something about this because these types of legislation is scary and if we just ignore them well it's going to get a lot worse so they send a letter and then this is also really nice that GOA does. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten these from them, but they'll basically, oh, wrong way guys, they'll send you these postcards. The first one is addressed to President Donald Trump. The second one is addressed to, with me living in Michigan, Senator Stabenow. The next one is addressed to Senator Peters. And they're slightly worded a little different, but I'm going to read these real quick because this is something that could give you guys ideas. Or if you're sitting on these postcards in your junk mail, mail these out tomorrow. Fill it out tonight, mail it out tomorrow. We can't wait, guys. And if you're going to call an email, yeah, do that too. There's really not a such thing as doing too much, right? So, dear President Trump, as one of 2 million supporters of Gun Owners of America in key states, 
I call on you to reverse course and reject the proposed deal with Congress to target law-abiding gun owners with red flag gun confiscation raids. Place our private medical information into a, for a federal database, impose universal background checks, and possibly even bans, pass bans on popular firearms. You were elected because you earned the support of millions of gun owners. Please stand with your base and oppose this scheme. I and GOA's 2 million other supporters in key states will be watching what you do. Sincerely. And that's where you put your signature there. Right? That means that, hey, this is me. Okay? Now, these two for the senators are similar. But it's basically saying at the end, you know, that I'm one of, you know, tens of thousands of people in your state. Of Gun Owners of America members. And I'll be watching what you do. So it's basically the same letter. Just kind of putting it in perspective for your state. Fill this out. Put your return address on here. 35 cent stamp, okay? If you can't afford 35 cents, I don't know how you afford your internet bill to watch this. So put your 35 cents on here, sign your name to it. Print your name afterwards. You know, I've had people leave in the comments lately they're worried about getting on a list. Here's the problem with that, guys. You can fear getting put on a list and you can let the government become more totalitarian than it already has become. You can let it get more tyrannical and you can let our government get so corrupt and have so much control over its people that you will then fear being put on a list. But here's the problem. By the time the government gets that bad, you're going to be on the list anyways. And then there are going to be things such as gulags, concentration camps, etc. If you think it can't happen, go see this little thing called World War II and what was going on and why America had to come in and help keep the whole world free so we're not speaking German. Or Japanese or Russian or Italian you guys know what I'm talking about so you're afraid to get on a list here's the deal I would be honored to be on any list that tells the government hands off these are my God-given rights they weren't given to you they weren't given to me by the government so just simply keep your hands off and we're gonna be cool we're the most peaceful people leave us the hell alone don't tread on us and we're gonna be totally fine but if you think you're still going to try to impose tyranny and you're not going to listen to us with our polite postcards, okay, and you're not going to listen to our calls, well, there's other means that none of us ever want to do. And I'm not calling for anyone to do that. Let me be very clear. But you want the government to realize that, yeah, they do kind of need to listen to us. And it's not really optional because this is our country. And if they want to take it from us, we're willing to take it back. And you know who else was put on a list? The Founding Fathers, everyone who signed the Declaration of Independence was put on a list, signed their own death warrant. And I know I just talked about this in another video, but there's a lot of people who are always concerned with putting me on a list. Put me on the list. I'm willing to be John Hancock. I'll sign my name big and bold right in the middle of the list. Because this list, the fake news, this modern, you know, socialism craziness that's getting spread throughout this country they might make you think that being on this list is something bad and that you should be ashamed of but to me i'm proud to be on any of their quote list because what who's on the list are the true patriots the people that you know if the government fears the people there is liberty but if the people fear the government there is tyranny and i always tell you guys call right i'm not advocating for anything bad i think you guys know that by now i have to put the disclaimer in because i don't want anyone to ever take my words the wrong way but we're going to go through the legislative process we're going to call these people want power the best way to hold them liable is to threaten them we will be watching you for our vote because if they don't get the votes required they lose their office they lose their power they have to go back to the peasant class with the rest of us so just keep that in mind. We can still hang a lot over their heads. That's what we're calling, writing, letting them know. There's a lot more of us than you think, and we will vote you out of office. We will make you lose your jobs. And in conclusion, guys, look, I know you guys probably believe me, but I'm going to show you. All these things I suggest you guys do, I do it in real life. So let me cover this up real quick here. Okay. I call my congressmen constantly, senators, the president, all of them. I'm calling, writing. This was a phone call that I made. You know, probably about a month and a half ago, two months ago probably now. I think this was around the beginning of September, okay? Maybe the end of August even. Anyways, I called, talked about gun rights like I always do. I oppose red flag. I oppose any type of, you know, gun confiscation orders. I oppose assault weapons bans, on and on and on. I tell them all as briefly as I can. 
like I've said before, a lot of my calls are more focused on one particular thing. So when I call my congressman, this is Representative Tim Wahlberg, Michigan's 7th District. And this is for the Congress of the United States, Washington, D.C. Okay. There's the committee to see on. I called them, gave my whole thing like I normally do, had a good conversation. And this, I don't always get written responses, but this time I got a written response. Okay. And it says, thank you for reaching out with your concerns over the recent discussions to limit your Second Amendment rights. I appreciate hearing from you. You will be pleased to know I am a co-sponsor of H.R. 38, the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act, introduced by Representative Richard Hudson, Republican of North Carolina. H.R. 38 would prioritize the rights of law-abiding citizens to concealed carry and the ability to travel freely between states without worrying about conflicting state codes or onerous civil suits. Individuals with concealed carry permits have time and again, shown the capacity to protect and save the lives of themselves and those around them. H.R. 38 is now before the House Judiciary Committee for, for review. Okay, that's legislation he's working on. Great. And look, this guy's generally pro-gun. He's a Republican. He usually votes the right way with guns. Virtually always. But I'm going to read his next statement. I think he's better than most, but he's still not good enough. And see if you guys can pick up where even my, my, even my Republican pro-gun representative still doesn't quite get it. But it's better than it could be. So I'm not trying to sound too bad, but I think he needs a little more informing. And I spark another phone call coming tomorrow to his office. But he says, please know, I strongly believe in the pro protected rights allotted under the Second Amendment of our Constitution. I consider myself one of the many Americans that use firearms for recreational hunting, collection, and protection. This is a liberty that is to be treasured and protected. You can be certain I will remain steadfast in my support for Second Amendment rights and in doing so defend the right for law-abiding citizens to bear arms. Again, thank you for contacting me. Please continue to keep me informed about your views on the issues that are important to you. Sincerely, Tim Wahlberg, Member of Congress. Okay, look, that sounds good and I'll take it. It's better than nothing, but here's the problem. He says that these were the protected rights allotted under the Second Amendment. Which a lot of it is a synonym for given. This guy still got it wrong, even though he's pro gun. Okay? He still doesn't quite get it, like I talked about in my last video. Congress didn't give us these laws, these rights, rather. No law gave us these rights. These rights were given to us by God. The Second Amendment doesn't give us anything. We already have everything we need. Okay? As natural born human beings from our Creator, from God. This just simply tells them the Second Amendment don't tread on our rights shall not be infringed. So we're back to even a pro-gun guy wording it that the Constitution is what gave us our Second Amendment rights. Not true. He also says that for recreational hunting, collecting, and protection. I mentioned all those in my last, in my last video. And those all do stand on their own two feet. Perfectly valid reasons. But he's missing the most important thing. To fight off a potentially tyrannical government to where if we ask them politely not to tread and they still tread anyways that we could possibly have to force them to stop and he doesn't acknowledge that either so he's doing a pretty good job he does usually vote the right way and in the end how they vote is all that matters but i'm only giving you guys this as an example of a get involved talk to your people in washington dc okay that represents you in your home state or your home district but just remember even the republicans Many senators, many representatives, and in many cases with Second Amendment rights, the president, they're not really on our side. So we need to get in their faces and tell them. Figuratively, obviously, I would never walk up and physically approach them, but get in their faces with phone calls, rallies, letters, these postcards. These postcards are freaking awesome, guys. This is a great thing that Gun Owners of America does. Awesome, okay? Send them. There's something about them knowing you took the time to sign your name. Again, add yourself to a list. Whatever. With pride, add yourself. Send it to them. Pay the 35 cents. They know that you took some effort to do that, right? So, just thought I'd share with, you know, remind you guys again about red flag laws. It's not over. The fight against red flag laws has barely even started. And... If you look at what's going on in California with their red flag laws, they were just expanded where every Tom, Dick, and Harry and who knows who can now flag you. So once they get them in, they're only going to get worse because that's just how these things work. So stay on red flag laws, guys. Obviously all the other gun control, but we can't forget about stuff 
because they're distracted with fake impeachments or things like that. And if your guy's pro-gun, great. You know, again, I'm not going to totally throw Tim Wahlberg under the bus, but I am going to call him to remind him that I appreciate you sponsoring and voting for pro, you know, gun laws, pro-gun bills. That's great, sir, but I need you to kind of clarify that you somehow believe that the Second Amendment gave us anything and that you as a congressman have the power to take anything from us. Now, maybe he actually believes that and the staff member just typed a little bit wrong. Going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt, but that's how I am, guys. I'm very friendly. I like a lot of these people. They might be good people, but I don't trust them. I don't trust the government. So I kind of read everything they say, and if they say something that doesn't seem quite right, I call them up. Clarification. Want to make sure I know what you mean before I cast my vote. And that's really about the only reason they care about us. Because if it wasn't for our vote, we'd be completely meaningless. All right, guys. Hopefully this information helped you. I'm always trying to give you guys ideas on stuff you can do. I can't do this alone. You guys can't do this alone. We need each other. So let's get together and do something about this crap. All right? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And have a good one.